Welcome everybody, this is part 7 of Surviving Japan. I haven't done any of this in like 6 to 7 months, because I've been just, you know, getting life done, but I've I've decided to do two more episodes just in case, because I wanted to share my experience, and uh, one of the topics is going to be pretty much uh, I've decided to well, not, well, move in Japan, but not out of Japan. <laughs> I'm still in Japan, I'm still living in Tokyo, and I'm going to move to a different address. So I, guess, so I guess the right term is changing addresses in Tokyo, kind of. Uh, and let me just talk about that first. And the second topic is going to be, whatever it's going to be, that's going to be episode 8, but just, just to give you a hint, it's going to be about exchanging your driver's license to a Japanese one. Yay! So, changing addresses in Japan, moving inside Japan is freaking stressful. Just want to put it out there. What you want to do first, and yeah, just first gather enough funds. You'll need a lot of money if you want to move to a nice place, obviously. And uh, there's a lot to talk about, and uh, I well, I made like two or three episodes already about renting an apartment, and I've experienced more stuff since I've been here in Japan and trying to move. Now, right, right now, still, I'm in my old address, my old apartment, apato, which is near Takadano Baba. And I'm moving to Meguroku, or Me- Meguro Ward, and T- uh, Takano Baba is obviously Shinjuku Ward. So I'm, I'm moving to a different ward. It's important to say, because here, as a gaijin or foreigner, you have the obligation of going to your local ward office. For me, this is Shinjuku-ku, it's actually in Kabukicho. And... Um, you have to go there and ask for a, uh, what was it called, um, Shutsu, Tenshutsu, Tenshutsu Shō, Tenshutsu Hyo. Uh, anyways, you just have to say that, Hikoshitai um, desu. You go there and you say you want to move. And then, um, obviously, they ask you, like, do you live in Shinjuku? And you say yes. So you have to get a certificate that you're leaving your address in Shinjuku. You don't need anything, only your Zairu card, right? Your alien registration card. That's all you need, nothing else. You just go there, you don't have to prove that you're moving out, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. Just bring your Zairu card, tell them that you're looking to move out. Uh, they will ask you questions like, well, you get a form that you fill out and then there are questions like just like your current address, uh, your next address, if you already know it, uh, which you should. I'm pretty sure you can't really get that unless you already know where you're going to go to. So put your new address there. It can actually be fake in a way, kind of, like uh, nobody will check it. No, nobody will check if you're actually going to live there, or if 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 it's actually an like a habitable building or anything. They didn't, they don't care. They just want they 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 give you a certificate that will say that you lived at your old address from here until certain time that you tell them that you're going to move. So you tell them actually when you're moving out. Um. And then uh, they they they're going to have like a, a a note like where you're going to move to, what's your new address, and that's basically it. Now while you're there, you might want to get to Jimin Hyo, because uh, uh, I'll tell you later why. It's basically a document that it's a copy of your um, what's the right word for this, like citizenship document in Japan, which contains some of your personal data, plus it contains that it's, it's, it certifies your home country, your, your, your nationality. Even though there is passport 
or um, your whatever country's um, uh, ID not good enough because when you move into Japan you get a record and uh, they can only like most most processes or procedures only accept Jimin Hyo and that costs 300 yen and uh, a little bit of your time it's it's usually done in 5 to 10 minutes it's quite fast and Shinjuku is very good because every Tuesday they are open until 7 p.m. All the other days is I think 8.30 to 5 or maybe 9 from, from 9 but definitely every Tuesday they have this extended hours and uh, actually not too many people are there so I suggest if you're busy and you can get away before 7 you can make it there you can even uh, just drop in like a minute before closure <laughs> if you can make it to uh, the ticket counter and you get a ticket, then you're fine. And they, it's, they're going to help you. Shinjuku's uh, personnel is really helpful. So you get that moving out certificate. And probably Jimin Hyo, just for later. Because it's always good to have Jimin Hyo. Mm. And then you go to or new... Uh, Ward's office, for me it was Meguroku, which is actually, what do you know, it's near Nakameguro station. And it's, um, the person is r there really helpful as well, actually. Uh, it wasn't crowded at all. I went like during lunch break, so it was like, I don't know, like uh, from, from 1 p.m. or something. Um, so there were multiple things I did. So you present this moving out form from Shinjuku, your own address. Then you fill out another form, obviously. Again, uh, you will you will get to really good practice in writing your address in Japanese and your name and some of your basic data. Uh, and then you present that moving out sheet, uh, yeah, sheet basically. Uh, you give them your Zai Ricardo. And basically, that's it. They don't like you. Don't have to show them any like uh, contract or like w whatever documentation that you're actually going to live at the address that you tell them that you're going to live at. So again, uh, it's a bit, you know, like it's a bit too bureaucratic. I mean, I understand that uh, you're a foreigner, but actually, nation, uh, Japanese nationals also have to do this, and. It really doesn't make much sense. Like, nobody's going to check it. Nobody's going to be like, okay, well, that address that you told us that you'd be at, like, uh, is, is it really true that you're going to stay there? Uh, and every time you have your address changed, you have to go there and, you know, tell them that, well, your address changed. Even though if it's the same uh show, as in, like, government office. You still have to go there because you have to change your Zyrocado, obviously, on the back. There are six to seven lines. I think seven lines all in total, but one address takes like two lines. And I've moved like twice, so this is going to be my third address in Japan. So the next time I move, I might have to get a new Zyrocado. So that's a whole nother Tetsuzuki or process. Uh, anyways, I, I don't even want to no. So, you get that, uh, they write your address uh, on the back of your Zyru card, your new address, obviously. Uh, and then, well, as I've been there, I asked for Jumin Hyo. Yes, again, it's always good to have a Jumin Hyo, depending on where you live, obviously. It makes no sense to get Jumin Hyo at your old address, obviously. So, what I said previously to get it at Shinjuku, no, just get it at the place that you live at, at the moment, if you need it. But there's, it's, it's always good to have one. And I also got something like, uh, this was kind of strange because they never told me this. One, you should also change the address on your my number. It's like a new administrative system that you get a card and that's like some of your personal data and it just helps you and it helps the bureaucracy 
to be a bit simpler. They said it's it's kind of a new thing. It's not really well. It's it's carved in stone. It's 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 been implemented, but it's not really. Yeah, I I don't really see. I don't really use my my number at all. Nobody asked for my my number. And when I went to Megoroku, they actually told me like, well, you know, uh, you, you should actually change your my numbers address as well. I'm like, yeah, wow, well, I didn't change it since I moved to Suginami, which is, was the first. If you if you listen to my podcast, you know that that was my first month. Uh, given uh, I, I I got a shukisha, like I got a uh, kind of a, hmm, an apartment for free for one month from my company who 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 who, who applied for my visa for me uh, so i used to live in suginamiku then moved to shinjukuku and nobody told me in shinjukuku kuyak show that i have to change this so kudos for that and now actually i can't find my my number card also komaru so next um so that's when that's done, that's great. Then you can start to, to do the most important thing. As in like, well, okay, th th this is like step two. Step one, let's 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 take one step back. First things first, you gotta look for a new apartment, right? And that's one of the most stressful things because it's just everything in Japan is giri giri. That means that everything has to be like on point, everything has to be like as soon as possible, no delay, whatever. So here in Japan, there are a lot of companies in this business. Because in, in Europe, at least for me, it's either I talk to the owner himself and said, well, you know, I, or it's like the owner advertising his own apartment to rent, right? For, for, for rent. And then... You either call the number and it's usually, well, at least in Hungary, I know that it's it's the owner. And I guess some of the countries as well, it's the owner advertising. And you talk to the owner and then, you know, you either sign a contract or you don't, whatever. And then that's it. That's it. No need to go. Well, you should probably go and update it at your local government office. But if you don't, nobody's going to care. Here in Japan, they care. Yeah, because this is basically a permanent address. Because, well, I guess I'm Gaijin, so I do have to do that. But even if I'm in Hungary, I have a permanent address. But I moved so many times. I had so many temporary addresses. I just I just never went to the government office to tell them, like, hey, <laughs> as long as I have a permanent address, I guess that's why. Anyways, so here in Japan... You have Fudo-san, who are just there as a proxy agent, as a proxy slash agent. All they do is that they take care of the communication between you, the customer, and all the other companies and the owner and everyone. So they're like a proxy, an agent. That's I think that, that that's the best um, description, the agent. Now, the agent also talks to... So if, okay, if you want your apartment, if you want to offer your apartment for rent, you're the owner, right? But then there's a thing called Kanri Gaisha, which is a management company who manage your apartment, as in like repairs, um, yeah, maintenance and all that, because the owner just presents or offers his property for rent. He doesn't want to do any of this job at least most of them don't they just give it give it to to, to a country geisha obviously the country geisha will take some profit from it obviously and they give some of course most of it to the owner i hope <laughs> i'm not sure how this works though and then you also have um different other companies like um it depends really on the owner and the Kani Gaisha, but usually, as a Gaijin at least, you have to also go for either a person who's going to be the guarantor for you, 
or a guarant or as as a gaijin usually a guarantor company now a guarantor is somebody who signs for you that if something happens to you then they will take care of your shit as in like paying um whatever has to be paid if uh, if the contract is cancelled or broken now that is really hard to like everyone needs one everyone needs a guarantor but nobody wants to be a guarantor right so for Japanese people, that's their parents or close friends, but it takes quite a lot of paperwork to actually be a guarantor for somebody, even for Nihonjin. Easiest way for Gaijin, and believe me, this is the easiest way, and there are no other ways around this. Go for the guarantor company that the Fudo-san recommends. That's it. That's it. So there's this guarantor company. It's usually around 50% of the rent. So you obviously, if you're looking for an apartment, there's a rent, there's an amount of rent. Then you have raking, which is bribe. Then you have shikikin, which is a deposit, and these are all one month. So these are all one month amounts of. So if you, for for me, for 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 my new apartment, it's uh, ninety five thousand yen per month. That's one month rent. So that means that my guarantor company was uh, 45, 47, 5. It was 47,500, right? For the guarantor company fee. Then, Reikin, one month. So that's 95 again. Shikikin deposit 95, which you might get back once you move out. If you move out. <laughs> Uh, if you have kept the the apartment as you got it. I mean, two years, I mean, come on. Something will break. You'll get a scratch on the wall. And usually, country geisha or owner or whatever, they come and uh, they check it and they're going to find something. So you be prepared to lose all that money or at least a big chunk of it. Hmm. With that said... Uh, what else we have? Uh, some companies do require, well, I guess most of them require you to uh, subscribe for a couple of things. For example, there is this 24-hour support. There are, again, different companies for this. All they do is that if you have some some problem, usually if you have some problem, you contact the Kanri Gaisha, the management company. But if you have, like, some emergency, like... Um, Kaki Kokan, like uh, you lock yourself out, or uh, you started cooking and just, you just can't uh, turn off the gas, and you need some, and it's like 3 a.m. in the morning, and you don't know what to do, you call that number. It's usually like Ichimon, Nimanyan, so it's not that much uh, for two years, of course. Uh, of course, everything is for two years. So the the guarantor company as well, this way for our support. Uh, usually you have to do some insurance, usually fire insurance or just building insurance, whatever. That's that can be anything from fifty percent of the rent to well, it depends really. And then um, you have to pay for your key exchange, so it is advisable. I mean, Japan is a really secure country, but it's still advisable to change the keys just for your own um, harmony, like your your own souls. Uh, how, how do you say that? Just for your own safety or well-being. <laughs> uh, that's usually like... <sighs> 10,000 to 15,000, 20,000. It depends on the key, though. Obviously, uh, it, it really depends on the lock and the key. So that and... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's another company you work with. And then there's... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. And then there's usually another company... Uh, no, there's no, 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 no. That, that's it. I'm, I'm just mixing it up because I've been looking at so many advertisements. So advertisement-wise, again, I suggest going to Sumo 
suumo.jp that's so oh, wait is it no it's suumo.jp if you speak japanese or if you don't then learn it that's the best site i could find it's not really for gaijin but you can find good apartments there uh what i did is that yeah you first you have to sit down with yourself and uh think about like okay what do i want do i like my place that i live at right now what i don't like in my place that i live at right now and then you might even realize that you know what i did the math and i did all this uh this thinking and uh, i've listened to roberto's um podcast and what he said and i don't even want to leave i don't even want to change addresses because it's just so painful and here's why so you look for an apartment you contact the fudosan uh you find the right apartment so let's skip all that thing with uh setting up the right conditions uh while searching for the right apartment you found an apartment let's say you found the perfect apartment it's it's big enough for you it has all your needs it's for example it's it's in a calm laid back neighborhood it's far enough from the train line but not too far so it's far enough from the train line so you won't hear the train noise but it's close to the train station so that you won't have to walk for 10 15 minutes in like the typhoon <laughs> if it hits when you have to work uh, when you have to go to work and you can't work from home and uh, there are some shops around and it's not really Inaka, but it's still close to Tokai. Uh, I mean, it really depends on you. These are just some of my conditions. And no washitsu. I hate washitsu. It smells and it, it's just mendoxai. Even if Japanese say it's like mendoxai because uh, bugs can pretty much nest in there easily. And then you have a problem. <laughs> And once you have one problem, you're going to have more problems when it comes to bugs. And uh, cockroaches are quite regular here anyways, so you don't have to give the cockroaches even more nesting uh, capability or probabilities. <sighs> and um, what else did I... I don't mind the toilet and the, and the bathroom together, but in my new flat it's actually separate. Uh, oh yeah and there's this thing uh, it's called the balansa nabe is it nabe Bal uh, ba ba balansu I think that's what it's called it's basically you have to rotate it or something to get like hot water even Japanese people say it's 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 crap I I never seen one live. I don't know how to operate it. I've seen pictures of it and it looked like ass. Um, I can't even imagine if if even Japanese say that. Ugh. But if you're okay with it, then um, actually that that actually decreases the apartment's value a lot. Anyways, these are just some of my conditions. It really depends on you have to think about your tukin. Your commute to work, obviously, how much you want to commute, what lines are you going to use, what's convenient. There's a lot of factors, but Sumo, don't, don't worry, Sumo has all the conditions you can dream about. It has a few future requests from my side, and I don't want to get into those, but actually, yeah, Sumo, S U U M O dot J P, they don't like I'm, I'm not saying this because i'm getting money from them no way this is just really surviving japan honestly from an honest gaijin to other honest gaijins i hope uh yeah so let's say you found the perfect little apartment you love it then you tell the fudo san that's the one i want to say it be prepared that the fudo san will say one well, you know, it's already gone. Then it's Shogunai. Or two. You know, I asked the owner and he doesn't really want Gaijin in his apartment. Which is absolutely understandable. That's fine. It's the owner's choice. I mean, if somebody doesn't like Hungarians, 
it's it's whatever. He had a bad experience with Hungarians before. Uh, yeah, obviously, if you were an owner and you had bad experience with, pff, I don't know, Chinese or something, because that's usually what I heard at Fudosan, that most owners don't prefer Chinese. And even if they do prefer Gaijin, they want you to speak good enough Japanese so you would actually understand what's up. So be prepared for these two things. Even if you were, if if they say, okay, green light to Gaijin, but you should have a certain level of Japanese, which is obviously investigated or kind of um, verified by the Fudo-san himself, actually. So if you can talk to the Fudo-san in Japanese and he understands you, you understand him, that's good enough. But if you don't and you need um, an interpreter, then... Uh, Maybe you shouldn't really use Sumo. There are other services which, uh, which 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 obviously cost you more money. But well, learning a new language costs money as well. Uh, so I advise you to really dig deep down and uh, try to improve your Japanese before you come to Japan. Anyways, but if you're already here and you want to move again, uh, that's like a, a bell. <laughs> Consider that as like a ring, an emergency call to learn Japanese ASAP. So yeah, you found it. And let's say the Fudosan says, oh, you know what, it's, it's, you can still look at it. And the owner said, Gaijin, okay. And the owner said, yeah, and, and the Fudosan verified that, yeah, your Japanese is good enough. So he told the owner, son, like, yeah, this, this Gaijin can speak some good Japanese. He can read, he can write, he can speak. That's usually not a problem. And now, you go and um, you take a look at the apartment sometime. You just uh, make make an appointment with the Fudosan, uh, one of the agents, and um, you, know, you just go there and uh, you take a look. And take a good look, like, um, really take your time. Don't take too much time, though. Like, But just look around, the uh, flat's going to be empty just take a look at the things like uh, obviously doors windows how do they close take a second and just stand in the middle of the room and try to listen for other like the neighbor noises uh, obviously if you're working it's kind of hard to go uh, in the morning or well usually you'll go at night which is actually not that bad because that's when most people are at home actually and they're making noise so if you stand in your room and you hear a lot of noise, then that's, uh, yeah. I personally, I don't prefer Mokuzo, which is um, wood, wood made or wood, 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 what was it? Wood, wood build. Kind of, ah. What's the right word? Mokuzo, it's, it's made out of wood. <laughs> so that means that the walls are really thin. Also, uh, yeah, you should pretty much look at the walls, like, uh, obviously if it's an older building, then the walls are thinner, usually. Not always, but usually. I, what I did, I, I I did, like, what, what, yeah, what I did is, like, I knocked on the walls, all the walls, to see how thick they are, yeah? Well, to, to feel how thick they are, and yeah, as I said, I stood in the middle of the room, quiet, like I was meditating and was just trying to listen to noises or voices of the neighbors. Really important. For me, I do prefer Saijokai, which is which is basically I just thought the somebody messaged me, sorry. Which is basically uh top floor and I also prefer uh Kadobea, which is um corner room kind of so you you might only have one neighbor or if you're lucky none like my new apartment has actually maybe one part of the wall that i share with the next door neighbor and it's side okay so it's top floor it's really good and i will talk about my apartment that i just got just a little bit at the end so you went there you took a look you inspected it thoroughly and then you can wait, but it's really advisable to tell the Fudosan right away if you like it and just tell him that you would like to apply. Now, applying doesn't 
give like it does it's it's not an obligation it's just kind of application that it's it's kind of like just to show the owner and yeah to to actually show the owner that you're interested and to give some of your personal details to the owner to for for the owner as well if he is actually interested in in you renting his property have you that done so you do this application it's just filling out some personal information again be prepared to write down your address multiple times and your so you need your work address you need your employer's address your your current address uh some of well, of your personal details you don't need well you might need your passport your landing permission which is in your passport actually it's part of your visa your Zai Ricardo hmm. probably they're going to ask you for some kind of uh, proof that you're working at the company and how much is your um, your income because that's also part of the of the Mm, chinsa was it called chinsa i don't want to say stupid stuff uh let me just i think it's it's cancer or chinsa which is which actually means investigation chinsa no that's not chinsa oh my god cancer yeah cancer kind of but there was another word anyways so it's part of your cancer inspection examination by the owner and by the country geisha the man, man, the management company and then once the owner says okay and once the the country guy says okay then um, the food also is going to organize the rest as in like he's going to contact their guarantor company who's going to contact you with the information like they're just going to ask you like what's your date of birth what's your name uh, oh yeah what's the reason for your for your move for me it was tenshoku changing jobs oh you also have to prepare an emergency contact which has to be nihonjin it has to be someone usually it can be a friend you can say it's a friend so you can just if you have a japanese girlfriend or boyfriend or you just have a friend somewhere in japan uh, ask him first or ask him or her first if they would do this it's basically emergency contact is if something happens to you then they should be contacted i guess it's part of the law it's kind of useless but the hoken kaisha uh, they uh, i mean the, the guarantor company they have to uh call this um re, uh, kinku ren raksaki as they call it the emergency contact and they they also ask um, your emergency contact like date of birth, name, what's your relation to, uh, to 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 you actually what's what's um, the emergency the emergency contact relation to you. And well, you also have to prepare all that, so you have to know your emergency contact's address, uh, date of birth, uh, your relation. Uh, it can be some companies do want you to give somebody from your workplace probably your boss or one of your colleagues they prefer that but you know friends are fine friends are fine you can say it's your girlfriend or just just a friend um and they don't have to do anything they just have to answer the phone and answer a few questions it's a few minutes it's nothing much so you can just ask somebody but it has to be in the origin <clears throat> so when that's all done and uh, you passed all these you passed the guarantor company and they actually accept you to be uh, they they accept they they, they will guarantor you <laughs> kind of uh then um all is left is to sign the contract but before that uh there's this uh, estimation mitsumori of your uh what's it called shoki hinryo is it uh, hinryo is it is it hinryo no hiryo no not really it's 
expenses. A hero. Yeah, it's a shocky hero. That's like the initial cost. Which means that, as I said, you have to pay the first month's rent uh, deposit. Uh, Long laundry money, <laughs> not laundry money. Um, bribe, uh, changing the keys, etc. That for me it was like, and and also usually one month is the the agency fee, which is like obviously the Fudosan has to get some money, <laughs> obviously for the efforts. And actually, I don't mind giving them money because they they do have to do a lot of phone calls and. Well, they gotta eat, and if your fiddle son does everything that you ask him to do, and he he actually also can search for apartments for for your your specified conditions, and uh, they have a different system. They have some internal system that obviously you can't access; only agencies can access. So Sumo is 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 the closest to there. Um, system, but still they have an even better system which is not public. So obviously there are a lot of fees there as well, so I don't mind. It's usually one month or it's, sometimes it's zero if it's a really shitty apartment. Sometimes even the uh, the Reikin or even the Shikikin is zero, but that means that it's there's something wrong with that apartment. Maybe it's near, maybe it's next to a train line, maybe it's like there's somebody there, there. There's there. There are some strange people living there and stuff. Or Jacobican, somebody died in there. It can be multiple things. Anyways, for me, the initial cost for this one. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot. There's usually Canrio, uh, Canrio, something like that. It's the maintenance fee. It's just. It's obviously it's different from the maintenance company. This is just something you pay. It's like a communal. It's it's like a community cost, right? For the communal areas of the building that you live in. Obviously, if it's like uh, if it's an apartment type, for example, just a, uh, a wood made um, apartment type, then uh, you usually don't have. Some mansion types don't have it. Because I guess it's included in the Yachin somehow, but for me it's uh, ninety five thousand, obviously for the Yachin, the rent, and I pay two thousand more for maintenance, which is whatever. So all in all, every month ninety seven thousand Japanese dollars, aka yens, <laughs> are taken off of my account. And that's usually you can multiply your rent. So if you see a rent on Sumo, you, you see you see a bookend on Sumo, and then you see the rent. If it's hundred thousand yen, let's say it's hundred thousand yen with everything, you should multiply it by at least five, and that's going to be your initial cost. And I'm not joking; it's half a million yen. If you're looking for something like a hundred thousand yen rent for an apartment, that's it. Just count with at least five hundred thousand yen as your as your initial call as your initial cost. But that that's that includes your first month's rent at least. So that's like at least you're good for a month at least. Uh, then once you have that. And then you sign the contract. You let's say you paid all the all the stuff. Usually you have to pay the agency fee separately from everything else because that's basically that's that's that, that just goes for the agency for the Fudel Sun. Then you pay all the rest to the Kari Gaisha, the management company, right? And they're going to take care of that. And then I guess they give some to the owner, <laughs> some. Uh, and they did distribute the costs and everything, so you don't have to worry about that. But here comes the twist. Okay, you got your new uh, flat, but also once uh, you've signed your new contract, because that's when it's actually official, 
you should cancel your current one. And uh, there is usually even, it's either a cancellation fee, depends on your contract, please check your contract. It's either a cancellation fee of maybe, pff, I don't know, depending on the yachin you pay for your current place. For example, like 50% of your yachin. Or, for me, at least, it's one month. So, basically, I still have to pay for the apartment, for my current apartment, for one month, starting from the cancellation day. Yes. So, basically, you just pay one month. You pay one month's fee for a cancellation. That's basically a cancellation fee. You can still live uh, in the apartment as long as you want. Well, well as long as you, as you, yeah, as, as as long as one month, at least. You just have to give at least one month notice. That's it. With that said, um, you also you, basically you just fill out a form, you fax it or you send it to your current county geisha and they will call you and they will ask you like is this correct and then you say yes uh, you have to specify a date when you move out you have to specify a day when um, they're actually going to call you when they're going to come and inspect uh, obviously they're going to expect it like day before you move out or on the day you move out after you moved out um, and that's when you're going to give them the key and that's it you also have to Oh yeah, that's not it. You also have to keep in mind that you should cancel. You should call the gas, electricity, and um, sewer, sewerage companies, and tell them like, yeah, I would like to cancel. And they will ask you from what date, and you tell them the date, and then they're going to ask you, okay, can we send uh, the, the invoice or uh, the payment notice to the, your new address? Or, or your old address, or how you want to do it, or do you want to change your payment uh, profile, like you want to use a different um, account. I mean, the, you just have to call them. Just call them when usually nobody calls them. <laughs> Try to call them like first thing in the morning or something. Call all three at the same time, and then just note down the dates. And uh, also, you should either have somebody who speaks Japanese with you, or <laughs> learn Japanese. Now, I have moved in my current flat during March, April, which is like the peak season for moving. And now it is October, November, which is basically that season. So everything just goes smoothly, but don't expect this to be true at April. Don't ask me why, but April is like a very important month in Japan. Everyone changes job. Well, if, if you change a job, then you change a job in April for a Japanese company. If you change a flat, you change your your flat during April, March, April. Don't ask me why. Uh, yep. With that said, let's say you've canceled everything. You're done. But most important thing, and which people usually forget about, this internet. Now you go, well, for me, it was NTT Docomo. I went in the shop. As soon as you know that you're going to move out, go to the shop. As soon as you know your new address, go to the shop. And uh, yeah, just wait out the line. It's usually a lot of people there with uh, a lot of things and uh, a lot of long procedures. Mine took like two hours or something, and I waited in line for one hour after work so imagine when i got home so when it's all done go to the internet tell the lady hey i'd like to cancel my internet and then she's going to say well uh, okay check your contract uh, for me at locomo they charge you two months of cancellation fee and you don't even get to use it for two months it just that's just a cancellation fee so you cancel it and then you tell them when you want to cancel it and then you pay. For me, it's 4,000 yen per month, so I had to pay 8,000 yen. And they're going to ask you, like, okay, so where are you going to move? You tell them your new address. They're going to check if they have, if, if they can provide you. So there is there is no way to just have your current subscription moved. You have to cancel your current one and then get a new contract at 
your new place, which sucks. It might be different with different providers or, well, so sorry, this is not even a provider. Provider is a different thing. Uh, Entity, Docomo seems like, or SoftBank or whatever, they just seem to be like, like agencies, like they, they sell services internet services, mobile services. So you go to the NTT Docomo shop and they go into, uh, yeah, if you're moving addresses, they're going to make you cancel your contract. And then uh, they're gonna check if the services are available at your new address. And then if yes, um, for me at least, I don't know if it was a special holiday season or I don't know, uh, uh, Varibiki or um, uh, yeah, I don't know if it was something special, but uh, I got like twenty thousand yen off um, from this whole thing because so I paid eight thousand yen kayaku fee, which is a cancellation fee. Then I have to pay for. The new contract, which is usually like, well, it's like 4,000 plus 3,000 for creating the new contract. So 4,000 for the first month swung thing. So it's, uh, that's seven. So I'm plus eight, 15. And then they usually do something like 10 to 15,000 for a cost, well, an installation fee for the new place. And uh, the way it goes is that. Obviously, when you moved in, you got a modem from whatever provider you used. Because so Entity Docomo is a company who, let's say, they are the agents, they are the food awesome. Then they contact, they are, they are in contact with providers. So providers are the ones who, well, basically the ISPs, they provide internet, internet service provider. And then there is also something called flats, who are the infrastructure. I think I already explained this in one of the episodes. Can't remember which one. Let me check. Uh, which one do I speak about? Yeah, it's actually the previous episode. Surviving Japan 6 Wi-Fi Internet. Kind of. <clears throat> and actually, I did talk about it in episode 5 as well. So if you're interested... Listen to those as well, because I might miss some information here and there. Yeah, but the big picture is there's the infrastructure provider, and then there's the service provider, and then there's agents, <laughs> kind of. Okay, so Entity Docomo will let you check we we'll, we'll let you choose a provider, it really doesn't matter which one you do. And you get a modem and uh, an installation from that provider company. Now, what they do is that a guy will come, you, you also have to reserve, kindly, a time with this guy and it usually takes two to three weeks, depending on the season. That uh, he just comes, he brings a modem, he plugs it into the Hikari Consento, which is like the well, if it's a if it's a fiber one, at least that's the only thing I can talk about. Um, just Google Hikari Consento, and you'll know what it is. It's just basically just like a plug in the wall, a telephone. Well, not that. Well, yeah, that's a te telephone wire plugged in the wall. But it's. It's a telephone plug <laughs> or an internet plug, a UTP plug, that is. Uh, and then he brings the modem, he plugs it in, he configures it, five to 10 minutes or maybe 15 minutes, done. Mm, but it's the problem is you have to do this at least first thing once you know that you're moving, once you know your new address, because you have to have your Zyrucado with the new address. You cannot go to the internet uh, to, 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 to do the internet without that. So that's why first thing, once you've signed your contract or before you sign your contract even, go to the Kuyak show and tell them that you're changing addresses, get your de departure notice or uh, leaving or yeah, uh, leaving apartment notice. Take it to the new Kuyak show if it's a new Kuyak show. Uh, get your address written in the back of your 
inside your card or and then go straight to the internet provider and tell them I'd like to cancel my contract. Yes, I'm going to pay the cancellation fees. Yes, I want your internet, maybe same provider at the new place that's available. Yes, great. If not, then choose another provider or just choose another agency, uh, that's SoftBank, Entity, Docomo, AU, whatever. Uh, and try to get this Kojish, uh, Ko Kojisha is what it's called, right? Ko Jisha, it's basically engineer. Uh, no, it's not Koji Sha. Koji Hito, is it Koji? Koji. Well, I, I just refer to him as Koji Sha. Koji Hito. It's basically the guy who comes and plugs in the modem and configures it and blah blah. blah. So it takes two to three weeks, and that's that basically leaves you for a certain time without internet. Obviously, one important thing is that. Uh, be prepared to play to well be prepare be prepared to either have a kind of uh, mm, a kind of intermittent time between moves as in like it's either going to overlap like you will have basically two apartments for half a month <laughs> at best or you're going to have two internet uh, well you you're not you're not going to have two internet uh uh, contracts because you can't unless you go for a new shop and then you do it that way but for me at Entity Docomo I stayed at Entity Docomo for now because they actually aren't that bad and this way uh, once I cancelled mine I mean you can cancel it in a way that you can cancel it on the like before the day that the engineer guy comes to the new address so you would have less downtime I decided to not do that because they basically charge you for the whole month so I am going to be down for like seven days of internet but I think I can I can survive that it depends on you I just didn't feel like paying 4,000 yen more for one week of internet at my old place and I'm not even going to be at my old place possibly all uh, all of the first week of November because I'm planning to move uh, like at the end or well I'm planning to move at the beginning of November the first uh, weekend of November anyways so that's the first thing you want to do is internet it's really important and uh, you also have to ask your provider don't forget to ask your provider for login and password ASAP I actually have to make myself a note because I already should ask for for them because they can send you to your mobile usually but if that's not possible then usually they're just going to send you by snail mail which takes a few days and then uh, again you're delayed with the internet you're you're anxious about it and you're stressed it's not a good time uh yeah and then obviously uh well to be honest at your old apartment you also when you cancel your electricity gas or uh sewerage sewerage you don't have to do anything for electricity again you don't really have to do anything for gas no you don't the gas person will come but you don't have to be at your old address he's going to come and he's going to um if it's out well it's usually outside uh he's going to turn off the gas but you don't have to be there because they can access it without you you just have to tell them when he could come when you want to stop using the gas at your old place now getting a new contract again at your new place luckily there are no fees regarding this uh, you have to obviously tell them your new address your name your senengapi so basically your birth date uh, and just let them know from what date you want to start using gas electricity and sewerage or well water basically um, water is uh, again there's no real yeah the only thing that you have to like obviously the electricity is going to be switched off and one and when you leave your old flat you should switch it off they actually tell you to switch off your your main uh, fuse socket whatever 
and then you when you go to the new place you just switch it on and that should be on if you agreed on the right time and date uh, so be prepared for that uh, when it comes to gas you basically now for the gas you have to be at your new place at a certain time so gas person will come he's going to set it up he's going to show you how to get hot water and that's it bye bye and um, sewerage is like uh, they're just going to let the water flow and uh, <laughs> and uh, the person told me because I called them and they told me that usually it's fine just to start using it but if no water comes out then um, there's like a kind of a switch outside a valve that you have to turn so pay attention what <laughs> what they tell you on the phone take notes and obviously you should get the water first and then the gas that just makes sense right uh for for gas it's for tokyo it's tokyo gas for for electricity uh, you can also get electricity from tokyo gas gra uh, well, grass gas but you would have to consume like 5000 yen of electricity and i just can't consume that much even if I have the aircon on all the time at summer, I'm still not consuming enough. So for electricity, it's better to go for TEPCO and for sewerage, it's for whatever your sewerage is. Usually your food assistant is going to give you information on who to contact. If not, then ask him. Internet as well, ask him. Usually they're going to say, well, just go to NTT.com and ask them or SoftBank. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it i think i'm not missing anything but yeah be prepared for a lot of headache especially while trying to find the right flat because there are a lot of shitty apartments in tokyo and uh, a lot of old buildings as well and a lot of newer buildings that actually look old <laughs> already uh it really depends on your own your own conditions and be prepared for paying a lot of money be prepared for a lot of headache a lot of um, regret <laughs> like why didn't i uh, look at that flat earlier uh, a lot of um, stress it's full of stress but it's doable but that's it for this one um, any questions <laughs> let me know in the comments below and um yeah stay awesome um enjoy tokyo life it's really good and um think twice before you move <laughs> that's all the advice i can give you thanks for listening and peace out <laughs>